in the heart of bustling Austin, Texas. We're here on the search within three minutes to answer some questions about social insects. This looks like a perfect spot. Fallen rotting wood, slightly moist soil with rocks, big potential to find the insect that we're on the search for. Isoptera. Oh wow, look at this. A cockroach egg case. Our beautiful Isoptera termites. An earwig in the order Dermaptera. It's a female. See those little forceps in the back? Males have much larger ones. And hey, look at that spider. Yeah. Beauty. These termites belong to the family Rhinotermidity. And they have the wonderful capacity to do something we could never do, which is to break down cellulose in plants. And how do they do that? From symbionts, organisms that live with them inside their guts. Single-celled organisms that are capable of breaking down the strong, strong structural support of plant material. This, this is great. Look at this. We've got a massive number. Wow. This is fantastic. We've got plenty to work with right here. A total success. Writhing isoptera means same wing from the Greek. Well, they're not even winged, but if they were to have wings, they'd be pretty much the same. And they only really have wings before their nuptial flights, when they mate en masse. Shed them, start a colony anew. Some call them pests. I call them amazing. And you've got workers, you've got soldiers, you've got accessory reproductives, those that take over if the queens were to somehow perish. But right now, all we're seeing right now, ah, there's an accessory reproductive, one that could take over. But for the most part, workers that could be male or female in this case. All right, we'll take a few more. and we'll explore the world of termites back in the lab. Our entomology lab, and place where we're going to pose and potential answer some questions. Draw a psychedelic wiggly design with an arrow. Now, we're gonna place some of our termites on the paper. Here's a termite that's falling pretty closely along this blue ink line. Will others do the same, or is this an oddball? Yeah, I hear some. Let's observe. Here's one taking the curve and not deviating a bit. Another one. Are these couple of termites following this line back and forth, looking at the color? Are they following a groove that I produced when I made the incline? Are they smelling the line? Are they tasting the line? These are the kinds of questions that we can answer using other colors and other tools. We know that these termites seem to be following the blue line. What if I place them on the black ink line? Not really. Well, let's try the blue pencil line. Doesn't look like it. How about the groove? Uh, nope. What have we learned? We've learned that termites seem not to be able to distinguish color or don't find a preference for one color over the other. They're probably not reading these English words. They're not following the groove. Ink and pencil don't seem to make a big difference. There's actually a chemical compound in one type of blue pen, the ink of big pens, 
that is the same chemical that's the primary component of a trail pheromone in this rhinotermitted termite. Hence, these termites are duped into loving a line produced by a blue big pen. Countless additional questions abound all around us. Come on.